Yes! What's up and welcome back to Congruent Academy, the place for people in process. If you're new here, I'm Cal and I'm getting my act together one video at a time. Now we are getting into 2023 and maybe you're feeling awesome about your New Year's resolutions. If that's you, more power to you. But if you're already feeling that the changes you're making are a lot to adjust to, believe me, you are not alone. I don't know about you, but for me, being someone who hasn't always kept their New Year's resolutions, this time of year can actually feel a little daunting. I can already start to feel some doubt starting to creep into my head, but rather than bend to its will, I decided that I was going to do something about it. We get so caught up in patterns and habits, and when we start to change, that change can feel uncomfortable. Because if you're growing, you're probably out of your comfort zone. Add to that, for example, you're learning a new skill and you're encountering failure and you're feeling clumsy and like you're making too many mistakes and you feel discouraged. Like, what's the point in pushing through that terrible feeling when you can just go back to that old way of living that you were comfortable with? We have to get used to finding our footing and keep moving forward despite uncertainty. It's so much better than falling back into, into old patterns as I'm sure we all know. I'm all for making positive changes in our lives because I believe that change is possible and so why not change for the better? I will never give up on myself, and you shouldn't either. To really lock that in and keep pressing on with the growth we are all capable of accomplishing this year, I decided it might be useful to create a list of five reasons to never give up on yourself that you can come back to any time through the year when you need to recenter yourself. Sound good? Of course, it bears repeating that watching this video or indeed any video is not enough. Taking action is critical. There are a lot of channels out there that I would watch all the time with good tips, but without actually implementing the tips, it ended up being a total waste of my time. As I am broadcasting to you from the Room for Improvement, I just want to remind you watching this video that I'm in work in progress just like you. Now let's get into it. 5 Reasons to Never Give Up on Yourself Number 1. You are worthy. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us said Ralph Waldo Emerson. For me, this quote is about the P word, and no, it's not what you think. It's about potential. The human potential movement I have learned is actually a school of thought or psychological movement of sorts that aligns in many ways with humanistic psychology, of which I have read none, I am pleased to admit. I'm adding it to the reading list. Right, but this is important to remember to yourself, particularly if you're doing something new, like learning a new skill. You are worthy, and have so much magic inside of you. Believe in yourself. You are worthy. The way that we think about and talk to ourselves is an essential element of the perspective shift that we undergo when we commit to making positive changes in our lives. Now, when I say you are worthy, I don't want you to confuse that with you are entitled. It's about having a sense of worth, such that you can start to believe that the continued investment of your time and energy into a positive change is something that you are absolutely capable of doing. This is also about reminding yourself that your complete sense of self is not just about the things that you can and cannot do yet. But because we are all humans, we all have inherent worth, and so treat yourself and others with kindness, because you are worthy. Number two. You can be a positive force in the world. If you aren't striving to be a positive force in the world, you should ask yourself why that is, right? I mean, what's the downside of striving to be a positive force? And I don't mean positive to the point of living in denial of reality or never allowing yourself to feel or think thoughts or feelings that naturally arise in life. I mean positive in the way that you choose to respond to life. I mean being anti-fragile. I'd like to tell you a little story to illustrate the second point because there are a lot of disaffected people out there in the world. And I don't mean to trivialize the situations that they might find themselves in, because life certainly isn't always fair, and it can cause people to end up in all sorts of personal hellscapes, to be blunt. There's a biblical story of Cain and Abel that I learned about through the work of Jordan Peterson. I'll link the actual video in the description for your reference, definitely check it out, as I'll be giving the TLDR, and then using that story to illustrate the importance of my second point. Basically, Cain and Abel are two brothers. They both, as it was customary in their time, make sacrifices to God. Non-denominational people out there listening, if it helps, just view this as a work of literature. You probably didn't need that reminder, but anyway. Fortune seems to favor Abel and not Cain. So Cain basically says, Hey, God, what's good? And God basically says to Cain, Not you. 
Sorry, not sorry. Figure it out. LMAO. And Kane gets all bitter. And instead of dealing with those feelings like a humble, forthright person who has to confront their own shortcomings, he decides to project it out in an act of violence, in killing his brother. Killing the ideal. Now, experiencing contempt when we feel like we're b being given the short end of the stick may be a natural reaction, but that doesn't mean we destroy the ideal because we can't cope with our own feelings of vulnerability or our shortcomings. Even then, someone can choose not to inflict their pain on other people and instead be a good force in the community. Someone could go through one situation and emerge embittered and like a black hole in the world. And another person could go through the exact same situation, humbled but unfazed. Again, friendly reminder, I'm trying to get my act together one video at a time, and I do at times get discouraged. I know what it feels like to fall short, to earn the hard-won lesson, and keep going, because that's the best I can do. So don't be a blight on the world. Be a light. Number three, success is the greatest revenge. Everybody loves a comeback story for a reason, so why not write your own? Think about all the people that counted you out, and ask yourself now, how good would it feel to prove them wrong? I'm not someone who often advocates for being motivated by revenge. I think that generally speaking, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But the thing about achieving in the face of doubt is that when you do that, you are breaking through perhaps unconscious internalized voices of doubt and proving that you are capable of, of achieving in the face of adversity. For me, I also feel like in order to be the best version of myself that I can be, which again, is truly a lifelong process, I am not saying that I have done it yet, I'm really just at the beginning. Like I was saying, to be the best version of me, I'm comparing myself to previous versions of me. So in some ways, I feel like what motivates me is proving that the version of me that wouldn't follow through with things isn't who I am now, with my actions. Can anyone out there relate with this inner battle? Let me know how you deal with it in the comment section below. I'd be really curious about that. I feel it's important to remind everyone out there watching that comparison is truly the thief of joy and causing someone to fail that so that you can succeed is wrong. So it's important to really define what success looks like for you. That way, you have criteria that you are holding yourself accountable to. And that's another very important point. You have to begin by shaping some sense of what you're aiming to accomplish. That's because success can be different for anybody. And it's not my place to say what it is and ought to be for you. It's more than enough for me to be working on that for myself. Thank you very much. But success ultimately is going to call for patience, prioritization, and persistence. I understand that some of us here operate in some more competitive environments than others, like war zones, or athletics, or other high-stakes situations that are inherently adversarial, and there will be a competitive drive that comes up, and that's healthy. But you have to play the game right at the end of the day. Even if that means you don't always win, you develop your character all the while. Number four, you are the hero of your own story. Imagine you're at the start of your story, and this is the time that you decided you were going to really start getting after it. That you were finally going to build yourself up and triumph over your former self and beat the final boss, because you had gone through the necessary leveling up to do that. That is you. Or at least, it could be. I first encountered this concept from Joe Rogan. I'm going to link that video in the description for you to watch. It's awesome and it always gets me fired up. Being the hero of your own story, to me, means embodying the heroic qualities and applying them into my life. Let's take one core aspect of what a hero is. Courageous. Now, it takes courage to get into a fitness class if you feel self-conscious about your body. It takes courage to go up and talk to that cute person at the gym if you have social anxiety. It takes courage to pick up a book if you had a hard time in school. It takes courage to be a beginner at anything. It takes courage to learn from a mistake. It takes courage to really live. In most stories, the hero falters. They get pushed to their absolute limit, but they stay in the fight. They don't allow themselves to be corrupted by the evil they encounter. Basically, at some point or another, you're going to find yourself having fallen on your ass. So be the hero, dust yourself off, and get back out there. Inspire yourself with your relentless heroic pursuits. Don't be Voldemort. Be Harry Potter, you know? Why not? Number five, life is precious and suffering inevitable. One of the core tenets of Buddhism is that life is suffering. In Christianity, Jesus carried the cross he was ultimately impaled onto. Those are only two examples in religion that come to mind. I'm sure there are many more, but I'm not particularly religious in any way. So live and let live as far as I'm concerned. But we have to accept that we will have to endure suffering from time to time. 
and we cannot allow that to warp the belief that life is still so precious and worth living. We are all human, and that means we are all imperfect. So embrace your life and live it fully as only you truly can. Okay, that does it for the five reasons why you should never give up on yourself. I think it's really important to remind ourselves about these points no matter what is going on, good or bad, because to me, they really remind me that we are all a lot tougher and braver than we think. Again, these are just five reasons, so we've just scratched the surface. I would love to hear about your experience trying to change the way you think and talk to yourself as you pursue your goals, so feel free to share that in the comment section below. If you liked this video or found it helpful, be sure to like and subscribe, and if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on social media at Congruent Academy. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, power to the people in process.